Grab some. Hi everybody, I just been logging this morning and uh, I'm really realizing or seeing what's happening with shoes that are not good. Um, the Borium and or Drilltex on these horses' shoes I've worn down. So now as the ground is starting to freeze up, it's getting slippery and they're slipping a little bit. So fortunately, tomorrow we're going up to the Amish horseshoe and he's going to put some new um, drill track drill techs back on their shoes to get them so they won't be slipping but I'm going to try and show you what I mean I'm going to show you the shoes also how they've worn right down so let's go down through here I just cut a tree so this is the hitch that I'm heading out with I usually cut a pull out a hitch and then I go back and cut a tree so the horses are out of the way and then I come back and skid it to the landing so so I come, come up here and, and go grab ladies huff and see if you can see what I'm talking about. Come here, lady. So hey, you'll see that there is nothing on that toe cork. Nothing. And the heel cork is nothing. So, so tomorrow it'll be we'll put, we'll put a bead of um, drill tax on those shoes on the corks, and uh, that will make a big difference. So I'm gonna see if I can show you what I mean by sliding, slipping. It's not too bad yet, but it would be worse if the trail was worse. A careful step. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. Put that gather up my lines correctly. I capital step. So if you watch right here, you'll see Bill's hind foot sliding on the hard frozen ground. And that's because the drill tex has been, has worn off the shoe and it's not there any longer to help get traction. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but trust me, it's, it's uh, not good when you don't have shoes that are good. And uh, when it comes to wintertime logging, it's a real must. So here we are up to Eli's. I got up here first thing this morning and he's been working on my horses, although he's had a few interruptions with some Amish neighbors that have come down and had to replace some shoes on their horses. So I just ran back up to check on him, see how he's coming. You got it warm in here, Eli. I know, I know. I see that. Did you make the donuts this morning? Did you make the donuts this morning? No. I don't know. I had a cookie there. How much stuff do you know to put in? You just I just put in a guess. nice chunk, mainly guesswork. Yeah. I know basically how much room I got it before I put the shoe on. So, so that's just regular oakum. Yeah. Soaked in pine tar. Oh, it is. Does it come that way? Yeah, it comes that. All way. soaked in pine tar. Okay. Yeah. There. Is that enough? 
Uh, do you know what those pads are called? They special snowball pads. Snowball pads. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine she's getting a little bit. <laughs> yeah. She's been in there for quite a while. How many other horses do you, have you done? Three. Three of them. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting antsy. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Just got the one more shoe to go. This it here? That's it. Oh, oh, you've already got it done. So these are the type of shoes that I use. They're um, logging shoes, pulling shoes, called a few different things. I've used them for years. They've been around forever, it seems like, in our part of the country at least. A lot of people don't use shoes like this. They'll use flat shoes and they'll put drill techs on that. But I feel these cork shoes work so much better for hard pulling. They're slipping a lot. They ain't gonna try it. That's for sure. That's right. That's right. It's very important to have good shoes because they'll they'll get discouraged really fast. You know, I've got one horse hands, a big one, Barney. I trimmed his legs, you know. Yeah, you know, I trimmed his legs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That horse you had before you bought that mare from my neighbors, probably. Yeah, I got wicked for that. Yeah, yeah. I had him uh, 20 years. Really? Yeah. And he would every year. Yeah. And it didn't matter where I left him standing. You didn't have time. I used to, if I come back to the house and I was gone, leave him standing in the driveway on the wagon or whatever he got hooked up. He stayed there for two or three hours. Really? Back to him. Really? Now, the other two wouldn't do it. That right. Way. They were good, but not that good. Right. It's amazing how you get some horses, you just, they were just so good for so long. Yeah. yeah. And most of these pads are secondhand pads I've just brought back up to reuse. How long do you think they're good to be able to reuse as long as they hold together? As long as they hold together, that's about the case. But these, I don't know, we've had these, well, used them last winter. Yeah, they've been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. have. Got their money's worth. Yep. I do really love those pads, though. They really work for so many different reasons. They protect their feet from sticks and, and um, stumps that I cut off. I, the foot seems to be so much better the next time around. Too. Softer. Softer, yeah. Not softer. Not to mention their real purpose, which is to pop snow off out from the bottom of their hoofs. That's what that little bowl, ball is at the, on that pad and pops the snow out. Are you coming in? I don't know. No. I'm kind of a nuisance here with this camera stuck here on your work. <laughs> but I think the people really appreciate seeing all this stuff. Yeah. And they've all Ask me to thank you for doing this because they really appreciate That's it. That's not a problem.
here. Almost got too tight. Yeah. Carl, did you ever use snow pads on your horses? Did you ever use snow pads on your horses years ago? Boy, they weren't good. I tried it once without any of the yoke come on it. I just put the pad on it and it almost seemed to to rot the hoof. It was not a good thing to do, but Eli's putting this oakum in there and it's working really good. horses come over and bite you or nibble you when you're doing this? I still got my ear, so I don't know. Did someone bite your ear? No. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, I still got it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen pictures of people that have got their backs bit from oh, really? a bad horse. That's yeah. I've never... There's, I try to be careful and listen. Listen close. Yeah. Sense it because if you hear that go... Yeah. You know, it's duck down because yes. they come and you can just hit that open. And that's something I always watch when I'm in the front. Yep. Or Cause it doesn't matter how tame they are, the temptation is there. there. Do you like those toe clips too? I love those toe oh, clips. They were good. Yeah, those are worse than at least two nails. Well, put a on I think I can get you from right back here, we'll be perfect. Exactly. Or can you talk? Yeah. Can you explain what you're doing and how that works? Okay, right now I'm heating up the shoe and the rod. You see that bracing in the meltdown? Those two will actually meet and melt together. And that's what keeps your drill tag on there. So it's kind of a trick to get it on there with a narrow spot like that. But yeah. Um, Years ago, I tried to do that. I had terrible luck. I, I got it on. It seemed like it stuck good, but it fell right off. Yeah, yeah. Someone said it's supposed to be like a yellow. Is that right? Like a brass color. But I mean, how hot do you get the metal? Cherry red. Cherry red. Yeah. Cherry red. And then you see, start seeing it kind of getting watery. Yeah. That's when you're ready to put your stick on. Okay. And you pull it along and. You but being such a small cork, a small ear, it's, it's more difficult. Oh yeah, it is. It is. And that's one reason why... Ah, sugar. That's one reason why I'm assuming the hind cork stay on better because of the bigger surface. Bigger surface, yeah. Of course, when horses are pulling, they pull off those front pull toe forks too. Yeah. So it's harder on them. When you're done, do you cool them or do you let them cool by themselves? I let them cool a little bit by themselves and then I'll put them in water. I don't want to cool them too fast. I know except for that last batch that you put on. Yeah. You, they held really well, but that last batch, so apparently it can go almost bad, correct? Yes, it can. that last batch was a bad one. That was a bad, bad batch of drill tape. Because usually you've done really well.
do you like which do you like better, the drill tech or the Ford? Actually, the drill tech. I like that better. It lasts longer and it's got stronger materials in it. I know if it's just right on glare ice, they just don't slip at all. They just yep. roll right along. Oh, I gotta fire up my force. So. so after Eli gets the front corks done, he starts his little torque, his little forge up here, and sticks the hind shoes, hind um, corks into the forge to get them cherry red before he puts the drill techs on. It's just that much wider piece of metal that it takes that much longer to heat up by putting it in the forge. You can do it both at once and it just gets some red hot really fast. So this is just run off roping. Yeah. This here, that thing don't take long for that to get nice and hot where I can just... It um, almost seemed like one side was hot and the other? Yes, the one blower or the one, yeah, the blower I guess they call them is... Burns a little bit hotter than the other one. Yeah, it does. I can see the red even right now. It's interesting because we can put the drill techs on the heels one time and we it's usually good for the life of the shoe yeah whereas the toe cork has to be rebuilt it back up every single time mm -hmm. That was the torch and took me a long time. Long. Yes. Quite a bit long. Is that yes. a good chunk to heat up? Yep, it is. So you just let it cool by itself a little bit and then you dunk it in water. Dunk it in water, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you put that in water right now, being that hot, chances are that real thing might pop off on you. Okay, the shoes are all done. Good for another six or eight weeks at least. And so I do hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.